Okay, great. We are live, so we wait a while for one or two people to join before we start. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's broken. Okay, great. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching us from. Um, thanks for joining in. This morning, we are just having a quick one here, and um, we are going to start because we have a few people who have joined in. Yes, so um, once again, my name is Anita, and um, with me this morning is Dr. Omoto Yossi Bamidele Ilesomi. Um, she's, hmm, should I say, a friend, a sister, and um, someone I really, really respect. I mean, right from school, she, we knew she, I mean, you know, some people, you know where they will be, even in few, I mean, you, you can predict where they will get to in future because they are brilliant. She's a, a, an intelligent woman and, um, I think um, she deserves the respect. Yes, now she's a consultant, dermatologist, and venereologist. Hope I'm right. And yes, yeah, um, yeah. yes, so this morning she would introduce herself actually, uh, and then we continue. But um, this is someone I respect too much. And um, thank you, doctor, for the opportunity giving me. I mean, for you being here with me to have this conversation. This is a conversation many shy away from. I mean, we are all guilty in one way or the other, you know, but uh, we have to talk about it. So, good morning, Dr. Toyosi, Elisa Miyakaro. <laughs> My dear sister, Anita, thank you all so right. much. And thank you for the welcome um, I received the last time I was in Ghana. Thank you. Oh, um, um, like you had said earlier, um, Ilesomi Omotoyosi, Mike, okay, me, um, okay. I am a dermatologist and venereologist, and I work as a consultant, as a hospital consultant in University of Ilorin Teaching Hospital okay. in Ilorin Park State, Nigeria. So, and um, my major areas of uh, research and work has been in areas of medical dermatology. I mean, all skin diseases which are referred to the hospitals and that are also in the community and also hair disorders. And I also doubled into cosmetic dermatology. So that's okay. what I do. Okay, great. So, um can you move back a bit so that we would see you clearly great okay. better better thank you very much uh-huh mm -hmm. now we are seeing you very well yes she's a fellow of the west african um hey is it west african college, college of college surgeons of, uh, physicians no, physician. and surgeons yes she, i mean i i respect <laughs> yes and um, I think um, behind every successful woman is a man. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, all right, all right. Yes, just like she said, she's um, Niba Midili. Yeah, so, and um, she works with the University of Lauren Teaching Hospital, actually, Kwara State. Um, and most of you know that um, I once lived in Nigeria with my parents, and then. So that is how I got named. She has been my friend for 
so many years. Yes, yeah, so Doc, thanks for this. Now we are going to kick off. Already, um, Mr. Paul Mens now already has written a comment already. We've not even started. <laughs> and then Sewa has written um, her comment too. Yes, yeah, Sewa, thank you very much. I know you love the hair. I said I'll tag you one of these days. I'm still grooming it. I have um, alopecia, so mm -hmm. I'm trying to still work on my hair, but it's coming up actually. It's really, really, I mean, coming up. So, yes, yeah, so we are going to start. First of all, before I read their comments, first of all, um, doctor, when we say bleaching and toning, or let us start with bleaching first, what is skin bleaching as a dermatologist? So I'm going to group all of them together because these okay, are please, words. Yeah, be loud a bit. <laughs> okay, so okay. I'm going to group uh -huh. them together. Um, now, these are words that are used interchangeably. So okay. some people would say, um, I'm into skin bleaching, but because that word is usually, um, it comes with a lot of judgment. So okay. some would rather say skin whitening. Mm. Some would also say skin lightening. And yes. some others would say skin toning. Yes. So there are words that are actually used interchangeably, but if we're going mm. to uh, categorize them, then we say bleaching is really going all out to really... Um, lighting and um, whitening the skin. So mm -hmm. when we say um, um, skin bleaching, what we mean is um, the use of chemicals. The use Some of chemical chemicals, substances okay. mm -hmm. that, are, that are usually used. Sometimes we use botanicals. And these are uh, placed on the skin or ingested mm -hmm. orally or given as mm -hmm. injections. And the aim is to lighten the complexion of the skin. Mm. to make the skin appear lighter than it was when mm -hmm. uh, uh, before starting out so that mm -hmm. is what is what is done and what it does at the end of the day is it reduces the action of melanin now mm. what is melanin that is this pigment mm -hmm. producing substance that is found in the skin of humans mm -hmm. now this pigment is the one that gives us our brownish coloration mm -hmm. The brownish coloration actually varies. And okay. it is very, very little in Caucasians, the white. Okay. While mm -hmm. it is very, very obvious in blacks, especially black Africans. So mm -hmm. the Asians and the Middle Eastern um, um, people, they are in between this, um, what's it called now? This line, this line of, um, of fairness. Okay. So what it does for us, and that's the reason why you see more of Blacks and Asians, mm. especially the Indians, try mm -hmm. to lighten the skin. What they are doing is using these products to stop temporarily or permanently the action mm -hmm. of melanin in the skin. Mm -hmm. So that is what skin bleaching is all about. Mm. So now. All right. Okay. The other thing I also need to mention at this point is okay now okay so that we don't appear too judgmental there are many All reasons right. why we, why people bleach okay okay now we also have medical reasons for bleaching for while bleaching. we also have cosmetic reasons for bleaching the skin we have medical okay. reasons now the medical reasons vary okay so you could have a patient coming into the clinic that had pimples maybe while growing up, and has mm -hmm. a lot of dark spots on the face. And okay. the person is already having psychological issues with that. Yeah. And is like, no, I'm here, I need these black spots to go away. So okay. if you are going to, talk, if you are going to um, remove those, black, those brown spots, that is a kind of lightening of the skin. Also, yeah. we have those that are on oral contraceptives, those mm -hmm. that are pregnant. They have what we call melasma. In which you yeah. have dark coloration of the face which just develops during these states mm. and so the face might appear darker than the rest of the body and mm. so they also come around and are like i need these black patches removed you also mm. have those that use some particular drugs some chemotherapeutic agents maybe for treatment of cancers and or even anti hypertensives or some of our patients that are used antihypertensive, they come and they are like, 
my face is now darker than the rest of my body. So you have mm -hmm. medical reasons, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sorry. Sorry. So we also have those that have vitiligo. I'm sure you heard of the vitiligo. Yes, before. vitiligo. Yeah. So in which you have whitish patches on the face. So mm. it might be so um, generalized, involving most parts of the body that we do what we call medical bleaching. We actually mm. do a whiteout and remove mm. other pigments of the skin because it is usually cosmetically disfiguring for some of these patients. And some of them would rather prefer to die, you know, than continue to live with their skin. So in those instances, we offer medical lighting in the cosmetic done by okay. the bot sector, by the dermatologist. However, okay. more often than not, this is not the case why people bleach the skin, especially in Africa. Mm, in Africa. The reason why they, they bleach is much, it's much more sinister. Now, mm. we, we come, most Africans come from colonial periods in which whites colonized our our um, African as a whole. Mm. And so there's this um, inferiority complex that had come with that period and mm. them always making us feel less than we have. Our skin is not good enough. Our hair mm. is not good enough. Okay, mm. so that's been over years. And so <clears throat> even in the society, in our society today, we find that the reason why people bleach is they want to be accepted. A lot yes. of them want to, they, it's due to peer pressure. My, mm -hmm. my friends are doing it. I want mm -hmm. to do it. Okay. Yeah. They, they think they will have better job opportunities. Now, about two months ago, I was at a mm -hmm. hotel. And yeah. um, throughout the four days of staying in the hotel, I only saw light-skinned receptionists. I had to mm -hmm. accost the manager. Do mm. we only have light-skinned ladies in Nigeria? You know, wow. I had to talk to the manager. I was ah. I was just irritated because we have dark-skinned people. You see, even actresses in Nollywood, yeah. and I'm sure maybe in Ghana um, entertainment um, yeah. um, sector that complain that when they are coming into the industry, they tell mm. them that you really have to lighten your skin to be accepted. So people mm. do it because they think they will have better job opportunity. Some do it because they think they will have a life partner. You know, they will have a partner if they are fairer. Do you mm. understand? And some don't yes. do it yes. because they, yes. they will be more accepted in the society. Yeah. And it's yeah. the mentality from the colonial era. And the, and the environment is not helping. You see our billboards, you see light-skinned, um, men and women all the time and then you're wondering where our dark skin um beauties you know so those are the um, little reasons that i can perform as to justify the reason why people go into bleaching mm -hmm. <coughs> sorry take a sip of water yes thank you okay so Okay, so so these are the reasons. So these are the major reasons why people bleach. And you know, that it's also a fad. It's a fad now, you know, mm. and which everybody is doing it now. You have injections, especially mm -hmm. with IP glutathione. You can walk to any clinic, any cosmetic clinic, even some dermatologists also do it here in some African countries, South Africa and all. You can walk in maybe once or twice in a week, you can get your injections and, you know, and then, of course, you know, in our environment, most of these skin bleaching agents are even over the counter and they're available everywhere. Yes. You go yes, to, yes. I'm sure, remember, if you, I'm sure you remember Chupet, all these cosmetics. Yeah, 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 I remember. Everywhere, yeah. you know, mm. they use all sorts. I mean, I'm sure you would also want to ask me questions as we go along about yeah, the content. Yeah. Of, oh of yes exactly of, of course of course mm -hmm. and their side effects you know so maybe as as we go on you, when you ask those questions then i can all respond all right all right so there are um let me just categorize them into two there are two reasons why people want to bleach or let me say three 
um, the medical aspect is there, the medical reasons is there. Then we have the cosmetic aspect of it. Uh, well, let me say too, because the confidence comes under the cosmetic aspect because that is exactly. psychological, but I'm going to put it under the cosmetic reasons. Yes. Great. Now, you've mentioned that some people do it because of jobs, to, to get jobs. Some people do it because they want some a particular type of spouse or whatever. Yes. Um, because some men actually prefer light-skinned women or ladies. Exactly. I know a particular tribe in Nigeria that the men prefer light-skinned women. It is not even only in Nigeria. It is here as well. There are some men that prefer light-skinned women. And so I understand that aspect. Now, when we come to the medical aspects, I know that with the medical aspect, it is under supervision. Definitely. So maybe I have eczema, I have um, whatever, vitiligo or whatever, I don't know, but you are going to be supervising the person using the, I mean, the chemical substance or the bleaching exactly. agent. Yes. And as such, it is for a while. What I know is that that is always for a while. But in this case, we have people using it long term. They use it long term. Um, we also have those that have very harsh chemical components that are very harsh. I mean, like hydroquinone and some others that are added that you don't even know about, except maybe you are a chemist. And then okay. you'll be able to know the kind of chemical reactions that can take place if you use this on your skin. Okay, so, so, no, so do you want us to go ahead and talk about that? So we are, yes, yeah, so we are going to talk about the components now, yeah. right? Great. Okay. So the components, what are the components? And I mean, let's start with what are the components first? Okay, so so I'm going to first group um, chemical, uh, I mean, bleaching into like three categories. All right. So we have chemicals okay that we use in bleaching the skin that are available okay. so we're going to be okay. talking about them and that's where the crux of the discussion is okay. we also use um laser that's laser mm. that's okay. focused um light source on particular areas of the skin these ones mm. are done in medical settings they are not just like you said we do them under supervision and it's for particular medical conditions. So we do mm. that to also lighten some areas of the skin. So we do laser. We also do mm. chemical procedures. This is a dermatologic um, um, procedure, procedure in which patients that have some particular medical hyperpigmentation and darkening, we do that mm -hmm. to lighten those areas. However, the crux of the discussion is due to abuse of chemical substances which some of them have been banned not just here mm. in nigeria even all over the world but all we over. find out that some of these products are still being used with very grave consequences mm. now these chemicals are some of them are botanicals made from um like they would say organic like you know that's the yes new that is the new people. name now they will tell you everything is organic it's organic yes they say, yes, it's, they organic, say it's organic you know? and whatever the organic is we don't know so so some of them will group them as organic and some of them will group them as artificial that's the chemical the um, the heavy metals now with the chemicals mercury was what was used in the past mm -hmm. now after some time in the early 20th century, when it was found out that mercury had a lot of side effects, causing liver problems, causing kidney co problems, causing even memory loss. Mm. Memory loss, sometimes with paresthesia, tingling in the legs, you know, irritability, the patient will be misbehaving. This was banned. And also causing cancer, skin cancer, it was banned. But you would be surprised to find out that even in Nigeria, most of the bleaching agents that are being produced under the radar have mercury in them. Another big agent that is being used 
is hydroquino. And now, because um, the all the companies that make use of this hydroquinone know that hydroquinone is not something that should be used. They now use different other names, you know, to cover up their tracks. And hydroquinone is supposed to be used under prescription. Now, when mm. we use hydroquinone as dermatologists, we only use it minimum six months. Mm. Minimum six months. And we'll use at least a 4% strength of the hydroquinone. But you will see some of these bleaching creams, especially the ones coming from China. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so, so many products containing this hydroquinone. Mm. And it has a lot of adverse effects. Okay, mm -hmm. which I'm going to be talking about, but I want to finish talking about the, the chemicals. The chemicals. Now, there's okay. another one, okay, that that they use. Okay, these ones are under. Um, um, okay, so we also have retinoids. Retinoids. I'm sure you've heard of retinoids. There, yes, retinoids. So, yeah. so we use sometimes they use retinol. They use glycolic acid, mandelic acid, hyperhydroxic acids, ascorbic acids. So these are also used. For, I'm sorry, one minute. These are also used for lightening the complexion of the skin, and they are all classified on chemicals. Now, we also have botanicals like abutin, like yeah, kojic abutin. acid. I'm yes. sure you would have heard about kojic acid. Yes, that know? is the new one. <laughs> so, they use that a lot. They use a lot of soy proteins, they use um, flavonoids, and then even. Some people will come to me. There was a lady that came to me with bonds on her face. I was so scared. I, I asked her, did hot water pour on your face? She said she used turmeric. I don't know what strength she used. Wow. I did all over her skin. And she had bonds, severe bonds. Mm -hmm. And so people use natural agents. They would use bleach, household bleach. They would use wow. toothpaste. They would use um, detergents. They mm -hmm. would use battery acid. They would mm. use uh, onion juice, turmeric, lemon juice, I, tomato juice, hydrogen peroxide, all sorts of agents that are toxic to the skin and can give rise to sunburns. Mm. And now, some of these products that they even use, some of them do not work. Okay, mm. so like they would, some would tell me that they bought um, things online. Of twenty thousand in our own naira, um, mm -hmm. fifty thousand naira, you know, maybe set, and then they use it and with no effect. So several of these companies, fake companies that make these bleaching agents that are supposed to be banned, several of them also make fake products, okay, mm. with toxic chemicals. And some of these toxic chemicals, I mean, um, Doctor Ajose of Blessed Memory, one of our top dermatologist in Nigeria okay. did a study in 2005 studied okay. um, patients are um, coming to look mm -hmm. that's um, I'm sorry lawsuit Lagos State okay University Lagos State University yes University Hospital, University Hospital. Yes. studied it over some um, years and found out some of the side effects of the use of this bleaching agent ranging from you are talked about psychological some people even lost their spouses, you know, divorce. Mm. Because some of their partners could not cope with the way they, their skin became, you know. Mm. Some had a lot of regrets. Some had loss of self-esteem and self-confidence. Yeah. Some developed body odors, you know, yeah. especially those that use a lot of hydroquinone. There's this mm. fishy odor that is associated with use of this agent especially um, when the person is not in eggs beans and all fowls you know um, so you know and then some have growth of air in different parts of the body you know which is not common but started because they started using these bleaching agents agent, you also okay. have more serious conditions like patients who develop eczema someone that had a clean skin and decided to use bleaching agents and come back to the clinic with white T spots all over the skin. Mm. Developing eczema, you eczema. know, fungal infections, you know, viral infections. Some would have wax. You know, I think in her study, she saw patients that had wax, even in the genital region, 
because of use of the bleaching mm. uh, creams. Okay. And then, okay, some of these, um, okay, so another major complaint apart from mercury, hydroquinone, as the ones that I talked about, is steroids. You steroids. Know? Mm. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the word from back A before and all these triple action creams. Yeah. Many of them contain steroids in high strengths like beta metazone and clobestazole. Mm. Yeah, clobestazole. Clobestazole. So these are very high potent steroids. We don't use them lightly. We use them in inflammations and we use them for short periods. They are not supposed to be over the counter, but what do we see in Nigeria? You know, our most African countries. In Ghana as well. Every, yeah, most African all countries. Of this, all of these um, drugs, prescription medications are over the counter. And so they are being abused. They mix them into their own creams and they sell them as bleaching creams. Now, steroids have very, very bad effects. You know, mm. can cause your face to have different colors, you know, mm. and then blue, black colors, you know. You might have some places that appear bumps, mm. you know. Then there's the thinning of the skin. Okay, I recently <coughs> saw a patient in the clinic that while I was trying to examine, had um, I'd used bleaching creams containing steroids over more than 30 years. And while I was trying to examine her, wow. I touched her skin and it tore. Her skin huh? tore, like, I'm, 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 you know. So there's really? that thinning and ulceration, you know, because it, the skin thins out. Steroid thins out the skin, reduces wow. formation. So, and in fact, the, the woman came into the clinic, she was crying, you know. She had regrets, but you know, it had been over a long time. And so, you know, she can only regret now. And so apart from that, some people develop acne, pimples, from use of these steroidal creams, you know. After a while, the face develops a lot of pimples. And so they come to the clinic, and then when you ask them, you'll find out that they have used all these triple action creams containing steroids. Also, apart from that, now steroids, especially betamethasone and cobestasone, you know, I, I, I said it before, I said they are high potent steroids. A lot of them go, get into the bloodstream. If you remember the skin is the gateway to the body, it has blood vessels. So when you apply this, these creams on the skin, they can be absorbed into the systemic circulation. And one of the side effects of steroids is development of hypertension, development of diabetes, development of very severe, sometimes some people will develop cataracts or even glaucoma, which can lead to blindness from the use of um, steroidal creams. So you can imagine the extent of damage that would do, that would put on our body all in the name of being beautiful and not doing it the right way. Sorry, I lost you there, but I hope you've been following. No, I I was following. Don't worry. I was trying okay. to take some. Okay. Water. Some water. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you can imagine the amount, the amount of damage we do that, that, that our skin goes through, all in the name of beauty. Okay. Both our skin and our systemic. You know, some people who just develop weight gain. You know, because steroid also causes salt and water retention. You can imagine mm, someone I using the rider creams and then developing hypertension from there, developing diabetes from there. It doesn't make from any there. sense. Now, you also have a very, a very, very um, large group of patients that use this rider creams and develop stretch marks everywhere. Do you yes, understand? Yes. The skin yes. breaks. The skin yes. breaks. You have stretch marks everywhere so that some of them are not now able to wear shorts, maybe sleeveless, and then they come to the mm. clinic, they're running mm. outer skelter. I used the cream and then I had stretch marks, you know. So people abuse these steroidal creams, and there needs to be um more control of these chemicals of that this are coming chemical, out of, of this, yeah, of this cream. Yes, yes, because okay. they know they don't know any better, really. They don't know any better. They do. I see. Yes. I see. So now it can thin your skin. Thinning is your skin gets, you know, the thickness reduces. 
So yes. just like she said, um, she was examining a patient and the skin tore. So just like it's as if maybe you are touching um an old rag. It yes. can easily just tear. Yeah. So yeah. that is one of the effects, thinning. Yes. Now she said you can develop um high blood pressure from taking, I mean from using um this steroids or bleaching creams. That is another thing. And she even mentioned that some developed genital warts. And you should know that developing genital warts means that you are at a higher risk of developing or contracting HIV and some other STIs. You, you, we, we get it. So we really, really have to be careful. Now, just like she was saying, the other day I, I was telling someone that, um, I, I think I made a, a short video that some of these products, the ones that come from, um, I think, America and France, are a bit um, higher in, in, in quality than the ones coming from China. You get it? So whenever you are buying these things, I think you really have to know what you are doing. And because it is not supposed to be used over a long period of time, that is the disadvantage. If you continue using it for a long while, then that means you are damaging your own skin and exposing your kidney to toxic elements, which are going to or can um, increase your risk of um, getting kidney um, malfunction or liver damage. <clears throat> And then even skin cancer. So it is a whole lot of, um, um, there are a whole lot of disadvantages on um, using this bleaching agents. Okay, so, and, so sorry. And, sorry, just to add two more okay. points before okay. we go on. So the other two major things that it does, okay, so we talked about the problems on the skin and then we talked about a major one, skin cancer. It can lead to skin cancer. Another, yes, major an one is, another major one is premature aging. Premature aging, yes. Aging. yes. So you see a 30-year-old that has been using bleaching creams maybe mm. since he or she was a teenager. Looking mm. like a 50-year-old. The skin looking oh. like that of a 50-year-old. Already yes. looking dry, looking mm. shriveled and wrinkled. Okay? and thin out like that of an elderly person because yeah. of the toxic effects of these chemicals on the skin so premature aging and it's one of the things that leads to lowered self-esteem do you understand yes. because it's very obvious you know you could you would see some women in their 40s they can barely open their neck yeah yeah the i mean this upper side of the the chest area <clears throat> they can barely open i mean their chest area um we lost Sorry. doctor there oh okay all right, all right. great so, face appears shriveled up you know the face looks very gaunt and shriveled you know looks aged it looks black blue you know it's a whole lot of issues. And then, because a lot of people, when they're using bleaching products, mm -hmm. they are not advised medically. Mm -hmm. Because for anybody that is going to use a bleaching, a bleaching product, you must be on 24-hour um, sunscreen. I mean, anytime you're in the sun, whether... And, and sunscreen, sunscreen have their own effects, right? Sunscreen are supposed to protect your skin from mm. the rays of the sun <clears throat> and it is all the more important when you are using bleaching you know when you use all these bleaching creams your sensitivity to the sun increases the sun increases yes so you have more photosensitivity and your face is more likely to burn so what we do for those that we give um, um, lightning creams is to make sure that they are on sunscreen which you must reapply every four to six hours do you understand but a lot of people use these bleaching creams they don't use any sunscreen so their face their faces get burnt 
And that's why you see most of them have all these blackish spots, knuckles always appearing, black, you know, the feet, you know, the areas that are exposed to the sun, they appear very dark, you know, because while they're using this bleaching product, they never applied a sunscreen agent. So it's so, so important. And that's the reason why if you want to go through this, you really need to see a medical personnel, a dermatologist, mm. a, a medical <laughs> dermatologist, a cosmetologist, or a plastic surgeon that understands your needs based on mm. your own needs and knows what you want, what, what you should have. However, if your skin is fine, okay? Okay, so because I was reading a little bit about body dysmorphobia maybe a few weeks ago, you you see some ladies, no matter how light they are, they still want to get lighter. They want to look white. I mean, no matter what you do, so that oh is already my, my, the my. They want to get more the light. Mental problem. Do you understand? Yeah. You think you're not good enough. You are not beautiful enough. You should be comfortable in your skin and variety the men, of the, life. Yeah. Yeah. The men that bleach as well. Yes, yes. And men, a lot of men bleach, a lot of men. And then I wonder if, you know, I usually make a joke when I see guys mm -hmm. that bleach. In my head. I make a joke. I tell them, well, mm -hmm. for Nigerian ladies, even if you are as ugly as a toad, all you need is money. I mean, you don't need to bleach your skin. Yeah. Just have money. Once you yes, have money, exact, exactly, ladies will not exactly. Tell you, you don't have to bleach your skin. You can be as ugly and as black yeah. as you. And ladies will run after you, but you must have money. Yes. So I, I, for, so, for the, I wonder why men bleach, really. I wonder. Why men bleach? <laughs> anyway, so, okay, so now um, we have the, uh, you've mentioned the skin cancer, um, the premature aging, especially on the face. And then that reduces your self-esteem because you're not looking as you're supposed to look. And that is why some of you, you look older than your mates. You see some of your mates, you see that you look older than them and you're not feeling confident. You get you get it. I mean, it's, it's a whole lot of issues. And some women, their husbands or boyfriends actually tell them to bleach and they do it. Woman, you are harming yourself. The man should go for the kind of lady she, he wants. He saw that you were dark in complexion and he came for you. He should accept you like that. If he wants a light-skinned person, he should go for a light-skinned woman. Don't bleach because of any man. And um, some people do it and even bleach the vagina area. They bleach their genitals. I mean, why would you even be bleaching your genitals? You see, and, and that is why um, uh, we once had um, a patient who was for CS, but had bleached and, you know, I mean, the doctor was a bit scared to even um, operate on her because of the bleaching and she was pregnant, you, you see. So that is a risk on its own because the healing process would not um, be fast. Yeah. And it can lead to um, further septic, um, I mean, in, uh, sepsis, infections. So we really, it really have to be difficult. careful. And it would even be difficult for that surgeon mm -hmm. to suture the skin. To suture you know, suppose, it. Mm. Yes, to sew it. Let me use the normal language. Okay. It would be difficult it. to sew your skin when you yes. undergo a surgery. Yes, because yeah. remember I just told you that I was trying to just examine a patient and the skin mm -hmm. tore. And the skin tore. And imagine... If I'm now trying to sew that skin, it will not hold. Hmm. It will not hold. It will be it will be a difficult surgery. Even a dead surgery. body skin won't be be like that. Anyway, so um, before we continue, let me read a few of the comments. <clears throat> Paul Mensah joined us from the US, I think, and he's oh no, is it UK or US? He says yes, it does in the inferior minds. That's bleaching is for the inferior minds that's what he is trying to say i'm showing it on the screen he said it is for inferior minds and then sewa ampafo says love your hair anita looking pretty thank you like i said uh, i have alopecia and i'm trying to you know kind of work on my hair 
my natural hair and i think um it's coming out great so and then uh kwabna says <coughs> it is it is it's it is sad most people include that in their beauty definition inferiority complex it is i don't believe blacks need to change their skin hair or hair just to feel good so sad um well yes you don't need especially for the skin you don't need to change it for the hair um i'm a bit not to um <clears throat> stand on that because maybe if like for example if you have my kind of hair that breaks and recedes you know you know it's maybe you may want to uh, you may prefer wearing wigs every time like i do i wear wigs a lot or just tie my beauty scarf you know fashionably and go my way so it depends on the individual for the hair but for the skin i think it is not good at all yeah it is sad and then he also said <coughs> sadly people say the color is changing because of air conditioning or some temperature change and i see a lot of very dark people in europe and america <laughs> we can ascribe <coughs> any reason but the real thing is you think you look bad in your natural color and you are changing it this inferiority epidemic hey that is my epidemiologist he's an epidemiologist so he said this inferiority oh. epidemic must just stop so we can develop we don't have to look like anyone that is true we don't have to look like anyone thank you Kwabna. that is um he was one of the support systems we had in ghana during the COVID is wow. with the public um health department that is um Kwabna Berko. and then we go to pascal quacho it says dr elisami is a great mentor thank you for enlightening us on this madam that is what um, pascal said thank you very much everyone that joined in yeah so now doc let's continue so now you've mentioned <coughs> all the effects it can have on us as a people if you bleach you get it so what other things do you want to say aside this one so what about people that use it for children on their children why would they want their children to be light-skinned or fair colored what do you think is behind it i i really don't know you don't you know, know. Um, mm, okay. I, I don't know you know some people project their insecurities on their children I hope you know. Okay, so their project is psychological. So this so is some just all psychological. Project, yeah. Some you would see some one year old, two year olds with big skin. Sometimes when I'm in church, I'm like, I should see the mother and give her a dirty slap, you know? Wow. At that age, you already bleach. You would see some people who come to meet me, please. Uh, what can I use for my child to be fairer? Mm. And I'm like, your child yeah, like, is beautiful. What do you mean? Yes, your child is beautiful. So the inferiority, oh, I was not able to, to do it for myself. I need my children to look beautiful and fair, you know? Because I, I kept wondering, and then, of course, maybe some of them had chicken pox at a time. Mm, at the time. And so, so, so this is uh, the other reason. So they will probably go and meet all these um, yeah, you mentioned that earlier. Uh, uh, cosmetics, and then they give them all sorts of concoctions, you mm. know, and tell them, don't worry, apply it. And then when they apply it, and because you know when you're starting the bleaching out process, oh, you mm. look beautiful. You when look very, happy, yes. Yeah. Oh, you look beautiful, you glow. Yes. It is over time that <laughs> the premature aging, the thinning, the stretch marks, and all the other um, chronic problems accepting so yes when you have this initial glowing complexion they're like oh this is this is great and then they want to continue and by the time they continue then the children will develop all these um problems you know you can imagine starting giving children from back say mixing it they do that a lot in nigeria oh and then the other reason wow. they do it they say and um, their children have bacterial infections and they don't want their children to have they lie they lie with bacterial infection every day even the adults um, um females yes. they lie that they have skin um, um 
whatever, whatever. So they are using this, they are using oh, that. They would mix it with shea butter. You know shea butter? I'm yes, sure shea you butter, butter. Uh, in Kuto. So what we call ori? Ori yes, so or in Kuto okay. in, in Ghana. In Ghana, okay. So they mix it with shea butter, this um, tropical cream mm -hmm. or material. Mm -hmm. People actual creams. There are many of them. And say, oh, they don't want their children to have any sports. That's why they are doing, you know, they give all sorts of reasons, sorts of which, excuse. excuses, you know, which are really not genuine. You know, if your child develops sports, come to the hospital, let's analyze what is causing it. How can we stop it? Don't take blood into your hands. Yeah, you know. Don't self prescribe. Don't use chemicals, dangerous chemicals that would destroy the skin of your children. So, mm. I mean, more, more talks, more um, health education talks need to, especially mm. for mothers and the fathers cream. of cream. these young children that have that been that have been exposed the to this um, to this um, Where to this cream. The cream. Then the so other big, the big thing one. I thought you were going to mm. ask me, uh, maybe <coughs> your audience have not um, got it. Maybe some of them have not joined in. Is the big thing now. The you see all these um um what do you call it now celebrities okay they are black today and then the next day they are white and then you are wondering okay so they don't even have dark knuckles they don't have any black spots or suits on their face they just look white and then you're wondering what is going on many of them use um Dr. Tyon, which is something that is available in most cosmetic um, places now. Um, let's... now. Can you hear me? Hello? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, okay, so I um, in the 1980s, hydroquinone was classified as a safe agent. It was a safe ingredient. Now it is classified as a carcinogen. When we say something is a carcinogen, it means it can make someone develop cancer. So hydroquinone is categorized as a carcinogen presently. But in the 80s, it was said to be a safe, a possibly safe ingredient. So, but over the years, when more studies were carried out in the labs and then followed up patients that were on long-term hydroquinone use, they found out that some of them developed some very serious medical conditions like kidney problems, liver problems, and cancers. So the same with glutathione. Glutathione is um, a, a, it's made up of amino acids, glutamate, cysteine, glycine, and it is compounded and the Concentration is high, is placed in IV fluids and then injected into the skin of, um, into the bloodstream of patients, of, of, well, let me not say patients, I would say clients that want the to get lighter network. skin. And this is done every three to four days. Okay, sorry, the network. Sorry. Can you hear me? Oh. The network. Okay, the network is very poor. Went off. I can barely hear you. You are still frozen. I like it. Think where you you talking? Well, when I went. MTN. Doctor Anita, I mean, <coughs> I can't hear you.
Okay, sorry. So I think I'm back now. Okay. So sorry, everyone. Um, that was um a bit of network issue. Sorry. So um, where did we get to? Sorry. Let's continue okay, from there. So you were talking about some of the the um act actors and actresses, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so, so I I I asked you that. The other major thing, I think, is a topical issue now. Okay. You probably get more questions on that, maybe as time goes on. Okay. Uh, most of the celebrities that you find now, they yeah. are black today, and then within a week, they are completely white. Yeah. And yeah. they don't have black spots. They tell, you, they tell you that they are drinking milk. No. They tell they us that they are milk. drinking milk. No, they are not drinking milk. They are using. And when they IV. drink more milk, then they can become light skin. No, 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 they are not. <laughs> when you drink a lot of milk, you become obese. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only thing that okay. will happen to you. Okay, so, so that's what they say. I mean, so I think, and you know, a lot of people look up to these actors and actresses. So I think that yes. is just what this is all about. And it is all just from what you've said so far. I think it is just about self-confidence. The conf um, 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 Catherine says, Catherine Ampoma says, no um doesn't boost it doesn't boost confidence people believe it makes them more attractive to others that is that's it so i think just like we said a, a lot of people want to be attractive that is it and just like you said when you start using them you look beautiful initially till maybe the skin starts thinning or you have stretch marks and, and i think that is where the problem comes from and that is where the issue is and um, well, we can't um, enforce it on anyone what to do. But what is there is this product, um, there are a whole lot on the market. And if you're buying, I've stuck to a particular cream, uh, Fair and White. I've used it for years and this is just how I've been. So I think it depends on individuals. I use Nivea, I use the 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 share butter, what we call in Kuto at night or the, uh, the Nivea. So it depends. During Hamatan, I use the the coconut. We have what we call a coconut oil. Uh -huh. I use that one and in the night mix with the cream and use it. So I think I use different types, but I've stuck for so many years with the, the pink um, fair and white, which is made in France. So um, I think if the product is good, you should just stick to it then rather than mixing it with other um, gels and beta metasol um clobestasol um you know ingredients those are the tubes what we call the tubes they come in tubes and then you have to put into your cream and mix it and then those that mix in the market that tell you they are organic they are not purely organic it is a lie it is a lie so if if you are using anything you should know what you are using and then using bleaching agents on your vagina or on your genitals it is totally uncalled for. I wonder how a bleached, uh, a bleached uh, man's penis will be or his genitals. You know, for the women at least, you know that it is hidden. But for a man, would you bleach your penis as well if you are bleaching? So it is, it is weighed. So um, Kwabna says the confidence comes from the belief. It's, it is the sad truth, and they waste so much on them belief. That is true. This IV drips they take, I heard it is very expensive. Yes. And then the tablets they swallow now because they said the tablets um, wouldn't give you the, the knuckles and, and all that. So they prefer yes. so, swallowing. So that was what I was talking about. Yes. That was what yes. I was they talking prefer about. swallowing that the tablets and taking the IV drips. So yes. you go so, to the clinic yes. and then you are given an IV. Yes. yes. So they give them I, um, glutathione, sometimes they give them vitamin therapy. Now, the, the is, okay, so what I was trying to say before you were cut off is in the 80s, hydroquinone was said to be a safe ingredient. Do you um, understand? In yes. the 80s, when it was just that when they, they just started using the product. Now yeah. it is a bad product in several countries and it is classified as a cancer causing ingredient now, as of 1990, I think. It has been classified as a cancer causing ingredient. So, what am I saying? Glutathione presently, they tell you it is safe, but it is a new product. Several studies have not been done 
over the years, we don't know mm. the chronic complications of use of this agent. Mm. So mm. that's the reason why you should be careful when a drug is too good to be true. Do you understand? Mm. You should be wary. I'm black today, and then the next day I am all white. You mm. should take a step back. back. Do you understand? And be yeah. sure, and be sure that this is not going to cause very serious side effects in the future for you. In the, or, you all right. Because the way all right. Thing is, when a new product is coming in, we don't know much about it. Yes, it is over yes. the years and we will now start we know. knowing what mm. the complications mm. are. And mm. preaching self-love, self-confidence is so, so important. We should be comfortable in our skin. We are beautiful. We are mm. black and we are beautiful. You know, mm. when you see a black confident woman, a mm. black confident man, you understand? That is all yes. you need. You don't have to lighten your complexion to be accepted. Mm. You yeah. understand? Confidence yes. is not just skin. It's not just from your skin. It is what that you is have true. inside of you. So that is we, true. we cannot overemphasize this. We cannot. That is true. Yes. yes. So um, Oba, um, Nanaya says, I am black skinned. If I should yes. be reborn, I still want to come black skinned. It is yes. so charming yes. to be black skinned. Yes, yes that yes. is um Nanaya. Uh, she's an advocate as well and a communication um expert. Uh, she's actually very dark skinned, and I mean I know her. That is she doesn't even have any routine. She doesn't even have any routine. I does it's just the 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 cream she does or that's and she's gone her way. So that is what um, Nanaya said. And then um, a senior um, doctor has written something here I'm going to show. Dr. Akonde, Dr. Tanimola Akonde. I think you know him, right? So he says, yes. <clears throat> Dr. Akonde, thanks for joining us. He says, mm -hmm. I've, I, I have I've taken keen in, interest on this topic after a massive um, dose sensitization. I examined a candidate who did an excellent job by writing her over 350 pages dissertation on this issue, whitening, bleaching, toning, and several other, um, several other, other, I think, creams used in making them look acceptable. She did qualitative and quantitative methods to interview people and also measured the chemical contents of the various available creams in Nigeria. The findings are quite revealing, and I look forward to the publication findings. I think that's what um, he said. That's Dr. Akonde. This is what he said. So he looks yeah. forward to, he said he examined a, a, a candidate that did a study, a study on that. And we need more of this studies, seriously. Is that so my, one of our top senior colleagues is a professor yes he's a senior yes and I, I thank him so much for joining in taking his time to join in now um oluwato sinfolarami rahim says there are creams that come with serum and scrub soap for me i use just the normal toilet soap like the imperial leather like the don't i'm not advertising but i mean you know irish uh, spring just any normal dove, soap, dove. Uh, dove, any normal soap for me. But it's just that I know I've used this um, fair and white pink one. I've used it for so even when I was in Nigeria. That is what I've been using. I can show you. This is it. I've used this for a long, long while, and this is how I've been ever since. And then I use the um, the coconut oil and the shea butter at night, um, and then the Nivea. Sometimes depending on, I mean, how the weather is. Uh huh. So, I mean, then she's asking this question. Are, and are they meant, no, let me read that again. There are creams that come with serum and scrub soup and are meant for clearing dark patches or spots. How safe are they for regular use? Okay, so, so, so they come with a uh hand. -huh. I'm sure you know her. That's uh, Dr. Leke's wife. And that, that's Dr. Leke's wife. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so she's asking a question that how safe are these um, clearing um, scraps and um, patches creams? Patches. Well, like I said, you have to see someone that is strange. So that, because a lot of them are fake and some of them contain toxic. Are fake. 
Yes, mm. some of them contain toxic chemicals. So mm. I cannot just tell you that you should use anything because some mm. of them we don't we don't we don't um, prescribe them. We we have mm. some that we use for brown spot that we use here in Nigeria. You can use in Ghana. It's also used in the UK. It's used in the US. Dermatologists, mm. we have the same language worldwide. We know what yeah. to use for these things. We know the products that work. But yeah. just going to the market and seeing any products mm. and just buying them because you, you heard that they contain serum, that mm. uh, contain active ingredients that you don't like this. But it could be a toxic chemical for all you chemical. Care, like some of the ones we've talked about, which mm. does not have control. So you must be careful. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think the market and buy just anything. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. So um be sure of um to Oluwatosin, be sure of the product you are buying. I think some products yeah. have come a long way and the like quality Neutrogena. is there. Like, like Neutrogena. Neutrogena, yes. Like dog, e exactly. you know, there are some products. Lux, Vaseline. There are a lot of products that are there on the market that you know yeah. that the quality is high. And just yeah. like I said, please do remember that the good products come with expiry dates. Even the cosmetics, please let us be aware of this because some are not aware. A lot of them clean off the expiry dates and emboss um, fake dates on them. So the product you are even buying may be expired. You wouldn't know. So I think we really, really just have to be careful. So um, Olu Atosin, you can use, I mean, the, you know, the facial scrubs and whatever but just be careful of the product you are using make sure you know that the quality or i mean you know the quality and read the ingredients as well read the ingredients these days i mean you all use google to read and all that so you can google the ingredients and see what it is but let's just be careful of this so-called organic um creams being sold on instagram and all that the tablets let us be careful because of kidney and liver diseases liver. as you are growing you are at a risk of having kidney or liver diseases please and please we are not going to um prescribe anything for anyone you, you get it so you are on your own at your own discretion know what is good for you should be able to choose for your own health i mean and that of your child don't um, um start using bleaching creams for your children all in the name of lying that they have chemical or bacterial infection please and please be confident about yourself be confident about yourself and build that in the children so that as they grow up they don't deviate from it yeah. and as a woman just like i said earlier we are rounding off um don't accept any man that tells you that go and bleach i want you to be fair skinned you should go for a fair skin person rather it is the same thing as your husband telling you that um, he will cheat if you don't re i mean um lose weight or reduce weight after childbirth it is outer rubbish excuse me to say you get it so please and please don't give in to such husbands and men that tell you all that if you want a fair skinned lady you should go for a fair skinned lady if you are dark you are dark that is it so that we can all grow and accept our identity our identity yes so now um doc we are done any last parting words you have for our audience so so it's just for us to know that we are all beautiful in our diversity we should embrace our diversity as a people okay yes and be so very we careful. embrace okay yes we should embrace our diversity and be very careful how we live our lives concerning bleaching of of, of, of the skin for cosmetic mm -hmm. reasons. When we learn to love ourselves, we would accept ourselves the way we are mm -hmm. and we would live more productive and happier lives. Yeah. However, yeah. if you have medical issues, you should medical see issues. A see a dermatologist. Yeah. See if uh, uh, um, uh, mm -hmm. A there are fake, one. please. There are fake um, uh, dermatologists in town. To, I mean, in Ghana, to, uh, in Ghana, this week, um, I think some doctors were were arrested 
Mm. They have they've been they've been practicing and they 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 are fake doctors actually. You see, exactly they where? were just arrested. Some were yes, some have practiced for over five years and they just napped them. They've been following them and they've arrested them. So please and please make sure that the doctor you are seeing is a real graduate of uh, medicine. You are seeing the person in a facility in a hospital in a certified registered hospital. The dermatologist you are seeing is certified. In Ghana here, we have, I mean, um, Rabito and the rest of them. In Nigeria, in Elori, I know there are a lot of them. And you can always, um, uh, maybe if anything, doctor is in University of Elori teaching hospital. I mean, when you go there, there, she has, because she is a senior consultant, so you may not see her immediately. But when you go, there are other people you will see, and definitely, if you need to see her, you will be referred to see her. She is there in the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital for any of your skin problems, allergies, and all that. But next time, we are going to be talking about allergies and um, body enhancement. That will be the last one we are going to have. She is going to talk to us about your normal, you know, everyday skin to skin. I mean, skin allergies you see, eczema the acne the pimples and all that we are going to be discussing that excuse me <coughs> Let's see. so thank you everyone for joining in thank you so much um we are going to wrap up here So, Doc, thanks for coming and um, thanks for having this conversation with me. me. I am so grateful. Hey, someone has written something. Oh, sorry. Um, Samuel Ntiamwa says, I'm here. Oh, Samuel, thank you very much. Then um, Tosin said, thank you. Then Aliu Bagirimojo, I think it's Bagirimojo or something like that. He says, good afternoon sorry i'm just joining i i'm joining late please what can you say about this cream from oriflame do you know anything about oriflame oriflame uh, Orif, oriflame oriflame cream do you know anything about that <coughs> but they are not we also have some other i think it's a sweet company i think they make um, cosmetic products so, mm. but I'm not. We don't but do they do they products. do they sell bleaching products? I'm not sure. No, anyway. they they don't say they sell bleaching products. They say they sell fairness products. Fairness but products. I don't. Use, we don't use um, their products for medical lighting. Aliu, I've not used their products before. I've mentioned the products I use. It's just the fair and white Nivea and mm. the coconut and the shea butter for my now for my hair. It's just the shea butter and one other gel that I'm using to make the receding not to show. So oh. I don't really know much about the Oriflame. But I think but um, it's one of you the, just- it's, a, it's one of the creams that have been brought yeah, into- so I think cup. you just read the ingredients and yes. know the ingredients of what you are buying. We are I not mean. saying, um, don't buy this or buy that, no. Yeah. At your own discretion, you know what is good for you. You can read, you get it, that is it. But don't let us, um bleach uh, intentionally be using those um tubes and creams mercury all those things and be bleaching all in the name of because um we want to be accepted please and please let us not do that and let us encourage um our female um friends cousins nieces um you know not to indulge in this as for the men that bleach please i don't have anything to say to you because i don't see why a man should be bleaching i beg you so we we, we we round off here. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. All those that joined in from Nigeria, I'm very, very grateful. I'm grateful to Dr. Toyo C. Ilesomi for accepting to join me on this conversation. Thank you, everyone. I can't mention um, all the names that um, I saw online here. Um, I'm so, so, so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next um, Friday, we are going to do the next episode and then we'll wrap it off there. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Bye.
So you can stay on, doctor. I'm going to end it. You can stay on. Okay. You can stay on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining.